Hey, this is Joe Van Cleve. I'm at Ethan Moses' house. It's a Tuesday before the day of the eclipse. We have a 12-foot long shipping tube that is a pinhole telescope, and we have a pinhole fastened to a Nikon N8008 body. With the back off the camera, we're using it as a electronic shutter, basically, to control exposure. We're using a 3D printed back that adapts from the shipping tube to the Lomo Graphlock back, and we're using the Lomo Graphlock Fuji Instax wide back to take Fuji Instax pictures of the eclipse we hope. So today we're doing a dry run, figuring out how we're going to mount the thing. We're going to brace the telescope up on the edge of his roof right here. It's going to come down, it's going to get duct taped to this uh, light stand or tripod, and then we're going to just have one person down here adjusting the tube so that the light shines right down the tube to the back. Then Ethan's going to be up on the roof controlling the camera. We have a remote shutter release, but he has to switch it back and forth between bulb mode and instantaneous shutter modes. He can't do that remotely, so he has to be up on the roof and uh, anyway we hope it'll be a nice day for that eclipse but in the meantime we did take some test pictures of the sun in its uneclipsed form yeah that's good Well, it's Saturday, October 14th. We are getting set up here at Ethan Moses' house to view the eclipse. And the sun is right peeking over that tree on the other side of the house. And we're looking forward to getting set up. So we're gonna be using the 12 foot long carpet bagger telescope, pinhole telescope. This is a four inch diameter, roughly cardboard tube that was originally a shipping tube for a photographic backdrop or something that Ethan had. And we're using a pinhole on the front end and we're using a Lomo graph lock back with Fuji Instax wide film to photograph the eclipse on the bottom end of the tube and the trickiness to this is Ethan's going to be using an old Nikon N8008 camera body to operate as a shutter for the pinhole so he took the back off the camera he's gaffer taped the camera to the end of the tube and we'll be operating the camera remotely and up on the roof, and so it's gonna be really fun to do. So, uh, Ethan, uh, tell me, have you ever viewed an eclipse before or photographed one? I've not photographed one. I saw a partial eclipse from Seattle the last time it was there. So what do you think of this idea we have, this crazy idea of a pinhole telephoto camera for with instant film? Yeah, it seems like it should be a fun day. I'm really <laughs> excited. It's a very like narrow band, I didn't realize, over yeah. the country oh, yeah. where we get to see it in full. Yeah, and we also have the balloon fiesta going on today, so people at the balloon field will be seeing the eclipse in the middle of the balloons. Are you pole vaulting, Ethan? Got to get up on the roof somehow. <laughs> oh, yes. Look at that thing. So this is the N8008. You can see AF. The camera body is there with some wires for the shutter. And on the business end is the an adapter that Ethan 3D printed for the Lomo graph lock back using the roof of the house as a support. For Hands are off, self-supporting, kind of, sort of. All right. Pretty good. Yeah. All right, so that's bulb mode. Ah, cool. nice. I can go down to an eight thousandth of a second. Another reason why this is a nice camera uh, yes, choice yes, for yes. this one. Ooh, Ethan has some photographic toys here. So we have the focusing back, the Lomo graph lock back itself for the Fuji Instax wide film. Okay, we got a bunch of Fuji Instax wide monochrome and maybe some, oh, and some color as well. Ethan is loaded up with Instax film. Ethan, what are you doing? It's not worth it. Okay, yeah, he has to wire up the camera. Ah, oh, there we go. It's working. And now you gotta remember, yellow to red, red to yellow is very important. And this is Gerson, Eli, and he has a Nikon F3. With a 100 to 300 mil, 5.6, and then somewhere over there, my uh, M4 with a 35. Ah, and you're shooting color film today? Color film, but I got double X on this one, black and white. Oh, nice, nice, nice. All right, 
You're you're in line. In line. Okay. All right, I'm ready when you are. Okay. Pull the dark slide. Okay, it's out. Okay. In. Project. Time is 9.53. Well, we took our first shot, and we're waiting for it to develop. You can see the limb of the, the moon taking a fingernail slice out of the sun. So apparently what's happening here, if you want to know the science about this, the moon is eating the sun. The moon is like a lizard and it's, the sun is like an egg, a duck egg, and it's, the moon is eating the sun, right? That's, that's the science behind it. Okay, where's the sun? Where's the sun? Oh, there's, oh, there, oh look. It's, look, the moon is eating the sun, just like I said. Well, we've made a few test exposures, starting here. Didn't record the times on the first two. The third one, the uh, sun had drifted out of the view of the telescope. But here's the fourth one. It's still developing. It's taken at 0942 mountain time. Yeah, it's significantly eclipsed as the moon is eating the sun. Now, it's actually pretty good and uh, surprisingly works really well. And you can probably see I need to readjust the telescope right here. There we go. Now I need to move it a little bit to the west. And that'll give it time to drift through the field of view from right to left. I don't know why you're on about this moon eating the sun business. We're scientists here. <laughs> so what do you think overall about the success of our little makeshift pinhole telescope? I'm... I'm really, uh, I'm digging it. I've never seen a full solar eclipse before, and uh, I'm really excited to see it. And I'm, I'm excited about our pictures. They're coming out <laughs> nice. 10.05, mountain time. We have a print developing, it's advancing. And we also have an anomaly here on the edge of the print. It could be the film, or it could be something that they don't want you to know. <laughs> exactly. It's getting to be closer to totality. So at 10.09 Mountain Time, that's what we had. And currently, it is 10.16, and that is what it's like right now. So we're about nine minutes away from totality, if you believe the high priests. And this is what it looks like currently. Pretty cool. Well, obviously I didn't have time to shoot video when I was doing all this, Ethan and I, but we got a bunch of photos of totality and near totality. We have really cool shadows now. This wasn't special. This was just a picture of a circle, right? I mean, I don't, you know, I'm not like a spiritual guy, but that was, uh, it was just way more, like I knew what it would be a picture of. I could have drawn it, but like, wow, that was so cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was really neat just witnessing how it got darker suddenly, you know, as the eclipse progressed. Yeah, and seeing all the shadows and uh, just even seeing the, the pictures come out of the, the weird machine we built. Uh, all like a, a very, very cool experience. I'm really glad we got to do it. Well, we're not really doing any science here, but we're confirming science, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the level of science we did was, like, easily we could have won, like, a third grade science fair. Not 100%, but, like, we would have one of the, the best trifold uh, billboards of our project, I think. Well, congratulations, Ethan. Thank you, Gerson, for helping. Got some good results. Well, we have quite a few photos here. It's really amazing how this cardboard tube camera actually ended up working. I guess it's a telephoto pinhole lens. There's totality. Well, this was really a, a fun idea. 
I got to thank Ethan for helping put this together and his idea of using the Nikon N8008 camera as an electronic shutter to time the pinholes with and really a cool setup. In any event, this is Joe Van Cleve reporting from Southeast Albuquerque. Stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye bye for now.